beautiful people. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Brad. We're just talking in the pre-show live on Twitch. Come check it out if you get a chance. Man, playing around with a bunch of stuff. The Red Booper, the box that I'm using to stream on right now, has been updated to Trixie. What's Trixie? Well, it is kind of Trixie, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> It's the next version. It's what's going to become Debian 13. It's not Debian testing. Debian's got a very unique way of going about doing this, where yeah. if you get Debian 12 installed, you're good. You can switch from Debian to Debian testing. A lot of people know that. That effectively turns Debian into a rolling release, which is great if you want to stay up to date on the latest and greatest packaging. And despite what the internet told you, no, Debian testing usually tracks very close to Arch. And uh, another thing I'm playing around with, uh, hopefully this afternoon, I was trying to get to it yesterday, because I know I'm going to get this question, with that RASDA, that little SBC, it survived Saturday night. If you go back and watch the Linux Gamecast, mm. all of Pedro's motion pixels and audio yeah. were done on the X4. But I want to do something I've never done, like actually done, done. I've installed it enough to be like, hey, that installed, but I want to try to get it working. Jellyfin. Can it work as a media server? If you don't know about JellyFed, it's like, you know, mm. we have Plex at home, but it's a lot better than Plex, allegedly. At least that's what the JellyFed people tell me. So we're going to see if that little guy can transcode some UHD. Should be fun. Mm. How about Should you, Jill? Be. What's going on? Oh, boy. So it was so nice to be back playing Trackmania again. It's been about a month <laughs> since I've been able to join the lines live stream, but I will be around more often now since work schedule has changed back to more normal <laughs> so happy about that we had some a lot of challenging tracks yesterday Vin. <laughs> we're almost speed. we're winding down i was talking about yeah. that in the pre-show not to go on about it too much but come play with us on tuesdays and fridays now you even get the opportunity to play on a raspberry pi zero w2 because that's mm -hmm. what the host the server's being hosted on right now no joke yeah and it's running <laughs> like a champ. I'm doing some testing for an inter interfacing Linux thing I'm working on. And uh, it kind of turned into a like, oh, this would be a good laugh for a video and a little project for everybody to like, this is viable. I need to explore this and do other things with it on top of that. But let's get into it though. Yay. After 20 years. <laughs> this is a big one. <laughs> Real-time Linux has made it to the kernel for reals this time. Like for realsy reals. <laughs> Hey, it's the real time guys. Ah, oh, yes. So, what is real time OS? No one knows. It's a secret. No, but we're talking about the preempt RT patch, and like that showed up somewhere around 2005. It's been a minute. It's been around, widely used in universities by the science boffins, and strangely enough, people like myself, recording engineers or musicians. And traditionally, to get this working, you have to patch the kernel yourself or Use something like Debian or Ubuntu if you want to pay money for it, because uh, I think they added that option like back in 2022. No more of that nonsense. Real-time patches are going to be available for normies baked right into the kernel that have to be enabled before building the kernel, and distributions are not going to do that for you. They're not. Full RT, it can definitely cause problems. I know this firsthand with drivers like the ones from Blackmagic that I'm using right now, and of course, NVIDIA. Even though NVIDIA drivers do work for the most part, even though you do have to pass a special moon glyph, I got an entire bit on that, uh, how to get that set up on Interfacing Linux. It's a pretty popular page. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. I just thought this was such exciting news. You know, we've been waiting so long, and we've been talking about this for years on LWW, and Ven has been waiting patiently for it to be integrated into the mainline kernel since we've been talking about it. So now your wish is going to come true, Ven. I remember I had to install the Ubuntu real-time Linux kernel when I was using uh, Jack Audio for the show several years ago. And it's, it's nice not having to uh, install it or compile it. It's just going to be available for us to use. And it's going to be included in the release of Linux kernel 6.12. And so that's going to be a very huge and important release with the ability to be fully preemptible. And Linux will be used even more, even in more industrial robotics and audio production applications as, you know, it, it will be a real-time OS. And, and this is huge. There it is. Look at that. Let's there go. it is. You found it, Vin. 
I go, uh, whoever's this is, I Googled, I will give you credit once I find who it is. But yeah, there was a conference, uh, like the Linux kernel hacker people. I, I just thought that was really cool, man. Yeah. The open source summit. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty cool. Good to see. Love to see it. Now, something earlier this week, our next story comes as I, I had to have a think because mm -hmm. I've maybe like two years ago, I bought a, um, one of those little 13 inch desk monitors. And this week I really had to put it to use because next to it, there was an Amazon tablet, you know, the original Amazon fire tablet. That was like 99 yeah. bucks. I'm like, I'm going to buy that, put it in the studio, control the Wi-Fi lights. The battery on that has finally swollen to the point where it's oh. touching the screen. Yeah. <laughs> and really the only thing that tablet was used for outside of controlling the lighting in the studio and uh, cutting on a couple of uh, things over the network was just having Discord open on it. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I need to put Discord on something. I don't want Discord open on that page because I walked in here one morning and it was on and it was looked like it was about one step away from deleting somebody's post. <laughs> and Discord, I'm like, all right, that's enough. I powered it down, did the thing. And I'm like, I need to get Discord on another monitor. And I decided to use that. But what I could have done is just dug out, you know, I could have went to the Linux store and bought a Linux phone and used that. Yeah, this is an application that is awesome and can help you put all those old Linux-based mobile devices to use, like Ven was talking about, like phones or tablets. It is called Mirror Hall, and it will let you use any Linux desk device for screen sharing and as a virtual desktop. The Nokens Hut blog states, Some time ago, I hacked together a rudimentary Python script to make this possible. This script creates a virtual monitor in GNOME via Dbus, records it, and pipes it into a network stream. So this is this is really awesome. And the and the cool thing about Mirror Hall is that there is almost zero latency streaming wireless video on a secondary screen. That's huge because there are some other options out there for doing this, but the late latency is so bad you can't you know, stream video or, or, or do anything that's, uh, multimedia <laughs> requires, uh, playing back uh, multimedia, whether it's, you know, gaming or videos or, or whatnot, you, you just, those options, you know, are just good for web browsing and that kind of thing and doing, you know, word processing, but this you can actually do. <laughs> <laughs> do everything that you need with including you know maybe use it as a as a, a monitor for playing games on mirror hall actually utilizes gstreamer mdns and h h.264 video over raw udp packets and it has been tested to work in gnome and should work in sway and kde as well and there's an easy to follow tutorial for getting your mobile device up and running as a secondary monitor over at textphones.com that is linked in our show notes. Yeah, if you got something capable of running Linux, you can get some Linux on it, uh, use that secondary yeah. display, give it a try. But mm -hmm. if you get a Raspberry Pi laying around, you might just wanna stick a full color yes. e-ink display on it instead. And this was this is so awesome. I had to put it in our show notes because I was so excited about it because it's just so wonderful to see high quality and full color e-ink displays coming to the market that are now affordable. They've been around for a while, but they were, you know, <laughs> hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. So WaveShare just launched the four inch e-paper hat plus e the WaveShare four inch Spectra six color e-paper display also includes a new full color display with red, yellow, and blue primary colors, which creates a wider gamut compared to previous generations, high contrast and saturation for vivid images, 600 by 400 resolution at 200 PPI. Uh, that's, that's pretty good for a four inch display. It has uh, 19 seconds of full re refresh, which, you know, is normal for, for e-ink. Uh, grayscale includes two shades of gray in addition to black and white, and of course it has a has a Raspberry Pi compatible GPIO header, and it is awesome that it uses SPI for communication, so it is compatible with Jetson Nano, Sunrise X3 Pi, Arduino, and STM32. 
and there are full instructions to get started on all platforms. And it's inexpensive. The raw display costs $49.84, and the display with the driver board costs $60.66 and can be purchased over at AliExpress or the Waveshare store. But it's soon to be available on Amazon. Looking forward to it. And yeah, that like little mystery thing I was talking about uh, before we went live is also from Waveshare. So I don't have anything negative to say about that company other than their documentation could use some work. Man. Mm. All right. We might have talked about it on this show. I went back and looked and I couldn't find it. But back in 2022, you know, we've definitely talked about Banana Pie and the yeah. products, especially during the depioning years. Yes. <laughs> during the pandemic. <laughs> where you genuinely just couldn't buy one unless you were willing to spend upwards of $280 to get a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. And Banana Pie was rocking and rolling, putting stuff out. And we're like, then I was like, this is where it's going to go. People are going to start using the things they can get their hands on. And they released something that kind of got my attention, mm -hmm. which was like a little router board kit. You know, it had uh, like four ether noodle ports on it and it had SFP, which had fiber ports, but they're only like one gig fiber. I'm like, ah, oh, man, can't use it. Everything in here is 10 gig and for good reason. So I was like, all right, well, there it is. It's interesting. It's a curiosity. Maybe until I saw this, this is the one from this year. This is the BPI R4, where they swapped out those SFP cages with SFP plus cages. Now it's got dual 10 gig fiber. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Sweet. Now you got my attention. On top of that, it's also packing an NVMe slot, too many PCI Express slots, Wi Fi 7, GPIO, and a USB 3.2 port. So much stuff to play around with. And like, who doesn't want to build their own router? Because that's why I was yeah. originally like looking yeah. at it. I'm like, build my own router. That'd be kind of fun. That'd make for a fun, interesting project. I could put it head to head with my Microtech um, 4011 and see how they, mm -hmm. who, who exits the cage match. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm going to pick this one up to do a like little build guide and just have some fun with it on interfacing Linux. So I shot him an email because you know what? I didn't want to get the uh, Wi-Fi 7 module. The Wi-Fi 7 module for this thing's like $100. And I'm like, I don't need Wi-Fi 7. I don't have Wi-Fi 7 in the house. Probably not going to be adding it to anything. But I'm like, yo, what modules are, uh, you know, the little Wi-Fi M.2, those little cards, right? And I'm mm -hmm. like, which ones are compatible with this? I'm sure you guys have a list. And Banana Pie wrote me back and they're like, man, you ain't going to worry about that. We're just going to send you one with a Wi-Fi 7 module. I'm like, all right. Sweet. All right. Yay. Fine. I didn't ask you to, but I'm not going to tell you no. So I got one of those coming in the mail. It's got eight gigs of uh, built-in EMMC, four gigs of DDR4. Pretty interesting. 12 volt, 5 amp, USB-C for the power. It's got a case. I have no idea what they're shipping me. Again. Mm, yeah. <laughs> at all, because I, this was like the rest is like, hey, but I was just like, Tell me what Wi-Fi module, because they're cheap. They're like 130, 140 bucks minus that, but you got to bring your own Wi-Fi module. And they're like, we're going to, so I don't know. It's definitely going to need active cooling. There's a case for it. But I have no idea what's in the mail. When it shows up, we'll know, but it's definitely going to, it's more of a choose your own, you know, build a bear type thing. It's not going to mm -hmm. be, um, because if you want to update the firmware, you need a USB UART to yeah, plug that in maple. and a yeah. console <laughs> like, Plug those wires into the board and get a shell access to it to, uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, so much later in the future, we will get around to that. Uh, and it'll be fun. It'll be fun yeah. to play with. I want to see how it stacks up against a Microtech 4011, which also runs Linux, but it's not, uh, their operating system is, it is Linux, you know, it's running like 6X kernel now, and but it's not completely open by any stretch of the imagination, but their hardware is like crazy fantastic and for the price point. So I want to see how we can AB because Banana Pie documentation, pretty rough, but most of their hardware, that's like their thing, Solid. open source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll definitely have some picks up uh, when that shows up. I usually put that up first on like the interfacing Linux Patreon or um, then a little bit later after, you know, like I put an unboxing video up on the Patreon 
for that Rasta thing going through that. And uh, but I'll put some static shots up in the forums because I got a forum thread of like you know stuff that shows up in the mail, mm-hmm. which I'm gonna have to pay attention to. I'm excited yeah. for it. Uh, that yeah. that was kind of a curveball. I was like yeah maybe and i have no idea what to do with the wi-fi 7 i went looking i'm like do they make wi-fi because apparently wi-fi 7 is like pci express yeah speed. Like, yeah it, it is it's crazy yeah. <laughs> i i couldn't find uh any if anybody knows of like uh external adapters for that that are like legit because i found one on amazon with no reviews and i'm like nah because it's gonna have to be over USB C uh in order to get the speed to do it but I, i'm not like serious into testing that is want to see if it can do regular uh, wi-fi uh like i got around the house so yeah there we go and jill you uh, it is available on amazon yeah it, sh- it sure is so i found the base uh, model bundle for 128 dollars and 99 cents over on amazon and the full bundle is 259 dollars and 99 cents and um it, it comes with you know the full the full bundle comes with everything you need to to make it a route. Yeah, somebody's taken, <laughs> and this is the thing. This is pretty much what I've been able to piece together. Like Banana Pie just sells you the ports. Yeah, <laughs> like all the stuff that you see in that bundle. That's somebody else is like taking the time to like yeah get all the like heat they, sinks and stuff together. Yeah, like Canna yeah. Kit, right? Like Canna Kit, like they do for the Raspberry Pi. And oh, that's yeah. probably going to be part of the adventure mm-hmm. for um. Mm-hmm. Actually, I might even ring up uh, the person on Amazon and be like, yo, how much were like the, just the heat sinks and stuff like that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll have to see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. if, uh, hey, if you want to come hang out with us, hang out in Discord, come play some Trackmania, you want to get the live and uncut version of this show, you want to get mm-hmm. the downloadable version for the video bits where you don't have to worry about YouTube ads or anything like that, you can become a patron. You can support the show. Yeah. Buck a week. You can also uh, mm-hmm. come say hi to us. Come hang out with us. That's all you got to do. If that's not your thing, that's cool. We do the show live. You can come check out the live and uncut version right here on Twitch, 3 p.m. Eastern, every Wednesday. And uh, But we'll also put your name in, in the credits. How about that? I want to look at some credits mm-hmm. in a minute. We got a merch store. We get an Amazon wish list. I got all the stuff in the studio itemized on like an Amazon store. You can buy it from anywhere. But if you're like, hey, what's that thing? Ben's talking about, you were talking about the fiber router. Go look it up. It's there. That's under the um, about section in the studio equipment. But yeah, that's cool. Thanks to each and every one of you. Yeah. I do want to thank uh, Norse Ranger for that resub. 25 months. Awesome. Making it rain. Norse and I saw Ranger. Basil. We got like three Basils. We got Basil, Basil, Basil underscore something. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> wild. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Yay! Until next time. We gotta thank all our beautiful patrons, including our advisor, our Theron. <laughs> He's awesome. And our executive producers, one, two, three, four, five, Ian, Eshep, Kerdecki, drummer, our Chicago kicks bottom, Basil, empty, Casey Clism, <laughs> our sea monsters, Vera Tanuna, Truggy, Mike. System T, our, our Death Notes, Oil of Hope, Zeno, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Nubbin, our Chairlings, uh, I, too small text, I can't read it, <laughs> but there's a Mirror PPC is out there as one of our Chairlings. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and Josh girls, Strider. it has been fun, entertaining, <laughs> borderline educational, but yeah, get out there and do what, Joe? <laughs> Get out there and make something something Linux happen. <laughs> make something Linux happen. <laughs> if we take a couple of step, a couple more steps of that, we'll get a sentence out of it. All right. Yeah. Bye, yeah. Buddy. See you next week. Bye, everyone. <laughs>